Usually when I know that a project is going to result in a video, I'll go about things differently in taking um, photos and whatever documentation along the way to integrate with the video later on, um, which I haven't done in this case. Uh, so I wasn't really intending a video because there's nothing really um, well creative or inventive here. It's all kind of been done before, which is not what I usually go for in a project, but this was meant to be practical. You'll have seen this half of this board from the previous video, which is the CTCSS uh, encoder. Um, and the other half of the board was left unpopulated, obviously, to fill up later with something else. And there's a DTMF encoder under here, which outputs to a piezo buzzer here, which is unfiltered and terrible. But over the air, it is um, filtered with a low pass filter. Uh, so we get a, a nicer, more uh, curved wave form for the listener over the air. Um, on the keypad we just hear uh, confirmation beeps because it would sound ugly to play the DTMF through the piezo without filtering. Let's turn it on so we don't get bored too quickly. Uh, you'll see a, a fancy intro which is uh, part of code that I wrote ages ago but this is uh, a serial display terminal. And uh, that's really all that is. There's a chip underneath here, um, a surface mount 16F6280, which only displays uh, every line coming in and scrolls down. Um, so a line will be terminated by either an enter character or a line feed byte in the stream and the first 20 bytes of every line will be displayed um, for APRS data and this isn't the APRS modem well there's the first I actually know who that is VK4AB uh, so he's around <laughs> in a car somewhere so his locations off the screen uh, th uh, so there we have another one um, the serial terminal receives the first 60 bytes in its buffer, so I can interrogate it and do something with it, but um, this isn't the actual packet modem that's down here, and that isn't my code. It's a um, audio crossing, a zero crossing detector for audio, and it uh, determines frequency that way. This modem board, or PIC TNC, I think as the author calls it, uh, that's Bob Ball. Um, this is for PIC 16 F88, and uh, yeah, so that's uh, the only code that isn't mine in the whole project. Um, it outputs serial, so it's got everything it takes to um, interpret two tone, and then uh, so that's a, a bell standard, and then AX25 and APRS serial data out. So if you were to leave this alone, um, not touch the code at all. Um, you wouldn't see erroneous frames, um, frame separators, so it's, it's basically a, a clean audio input and a serial output 9600 board, which is out here, this wire. The terminal will have one more function, which is to extract the time of day and display it all on a line of its own, if it finds that at the time in a packet. I found times that are 27 minutes ahead and whatnot. So <laughs> the original idea of being stranded in the desert with just a radio um, to find the time of day for whatever situation that was in theory, uh, it's not quite reliable unless you get a number of packets to compare. Um, so it'll convert Zulu time to local time. You might not see it here because it also has to be a, a UTC time packet. Um, so it doesn't bother about local time because then it would have to know different time zones and whatnot. If we receive an APRS packet, uh, yeah, well there you go, you saw the signal meter come up and there'll be a new line here, which just scrolls down every time, like it just did then. ARI, RAI is a local repeater here. Um, these packets probably aren't duplicates, they might be slightly different further on in the line. In this case, I think I probably will give this thing away. It's basically for me to practice Morse, Morse code on um, over FM. A Morse key can go into here, so I could actually mount a phono socket and have a key down here, but that's the test button. Um, DTMF 
We only hear a beep here because it's messy and unfiltered through the piezo, but over the air it goes through a low-pass filter. And it'd be a very nice uh, curved uh, wave over the air. Uh, similarly with uh, CTCSS, we have a four-stage filter because I didn't care about um, attenuating the signal because it's got to be pretty low anyway. Um, yeah, so it's experimental, I guess. Um, I wanted to practice Morse, Morse code mainly, and I have an idea in my head to expand on this um, APRS TNC. That would be in different hardware. I'd be making it again with a graphics screen and emulating what your premium, um, the ASU HT does. This is the way the Kenwood uh, turned up in my hands. Original uh, was from an SK, a fellow that I, I did know from the club. Um, and seeing its guts, I kind of had an idea this is going to be easy to get into, much easier than modern equipment, and it's crystal controlled. So the way that I adjusted the crystal for APRS was to find one slightly beneath the APRS frequency here, and uh, you polish it with gumption uh, and a cotton bud to raise its frequency, and the only way that I could test that was with a receiver, which is not ideal and then uh, re-encapsulated uh, the crystal back in its package. Modifying my own crystal only takes care of the receive frequency. So the packet um, modem yeah, can transmit, but at the moment the radio can only receive on APRS. <laughs> and the way that uh, that was tested was not ideal because I could only use um, my transceiver, my handheld transceiver, and I've got a dummy load for that. Hello APRS, hello AP. The way you'd normally go about frequency agility for an old radio uh, with this kind of uh, crystal tuning uh, would be to use one of these SI5351 frequency synthesizers and you'd have, a, I suppose, an LCD and a rotary encoder to um, select any frequency and that would solve um, a problem because um, the transceiver here is only loaded with a few local repeaters and now APRS and a couple of simplex frequencies. But if I were to go this way, I'd ruin all the front controls and the dial knob would do nothing. And uh, at the moment, the radio is um, original on paper, unmodified. and all the stuff I've added to it is just uh, peripherals. Um, but you could put it back to original very easily only by removing stuff at the moment and it would have drill holes in the top cover, etc. So that's why I avoided the use of something like this. It isn't too long ago that I got this FT8900 quad band transceiver which is also a cross band repeater. And I was pretty intent on getting one of about five models that fit on top of this fan enclosure because I was intent on uh, building stuff into it. Funny the way things turn out that that all ended up on top of the Kenwood. So at the moment I have the dummy load connected to the Kenwood transceiver and uh, the Yaesu handheld receiving on a simplex frequency so I can demonstrate uh, DTMF pretty easily here by holding down the mic key and pushing any button. Uh, and the button would have to be held down, push to talk would have to be held down for that, otherwise uh, we don't hear the tone, we just hear key confirmation. Locally. Similarly, uh, Morse code uh, will be, well actually no, we do hear that locally but that's messy and unfiltered, and only a nice waveform is heard over the radio. Pretty difficult, probably, for you to perceive there, because you can hear both. Uh, I think that's, well, actually, I have got one more uh, little thing. I won't have to transmit it, though. Um, I can automatically send uh, my own call sign at uh, various speeds.
of Morse code over the year. This keypad doesn't have an A, B, C, D um, key on it. Uh, that functionality is available by holding down the function key and hitting uh, any of the right row keys. So that'll be the, the B and the A. Um, apparently I've been told they're needed to control repeaters. Slideshow time again and the way the board looked at the first video and then the finished uh, CTCSS plus DTMF before the paint job and then after the paint job where some people said I wrecked it. Uh, the keypad, uh, the piezo buzzer that's just sitting on top of a, a dummy PCB for painting and then Bob Ball's PIC TNC minus any of the hardware that is required for output for audio output so it can't transmit and then a bit of uh, testing that I was doing using the Scion as a serial terminal paint job and uh, more of the test setup with a Yagi into <laughs> inside Yagi pointing at uh, a major city to get uh, more APRS beacons and then this is the Scion screen uh, with some of the full UI packets that you'd uh, receive on APRS frequency this one here is the pick on the LCD display backboard that you wouldn't normally see because it's covered by the LCD. And then some early pictures. And this is the time uh, being extracted from the packet above. So it uses the second line to display the time if it receives it. And the finished LCD assembly uh, where the PCB is also painted behind it. Kenwood TR7200G for anyone uh, that was interested. The TNC audio input is clipped so to get audio out of the radio you can use the speaker outputs but that can be annoying. I've taken audio output from the top of the volume pot um, so the wiper goes onto the PA and the volume control acts as a resistor divider. To get audio into the radio I've bypassed the microphone filtering and preamp and gone straight for the wiper of the FM deviation pot which is probably required for CTCSS, uh, it would otherwise probably be filtered. For this particular radio I probably could have gone uh, about tuning the crystals a better way. Um, they are trimmed, they have individual trimmers. Um, the radio has a centimeter output on its auxiliary port which is for an external VFO and uh, I assume you tune this slug to center the meter first up and then uh, take your, your risk and order a 9 pin valve <laughs> plug from China and hope that arrives which for me I ordered this all before the, the virus stuff so um, I, I didn't really have a problem getting it. Mind you, I haven't used this, but I believe the way it works is you power the unit on and the meter isn't perfectly centered there, so I believe you are supposed to tune that slug until the uh, meter is centered for white noise. And then if you have a station transmitting 100% duty or even for a long enough time to see, uh, the centimeter shouldn't deviate from the center and that's how you know you're tuned and some FM receivers uh, broadcast receivers had this sort of uh, tuning indicator in the 80s or 90s this is sitting on a, a duplex repeater frequency originally the radio came sitting on a bale um, which tilted it with the, uh, its own original display pointing upwards a little bit um, and I replaced that with hex standoffs to suit the keypad and display. Before the display I could sit the radio upside down and that's what this is for, a bit of protection so I could open up the back and everything and fiddle inside it. Same with the top, um, it could just flop over and sit on these bars. So this was unplanned, I was going to do a little tiny uh, two line by eight character display and only display call signs. Um, but uh, of course that display would have come from China and I uh, ordered two, one of them hasn't even been sent yet and we all know why so yeah to move things along I, I went to a display that I didn't really plan so it was going to finish here 
But um, yeah, I can already tell there's not a lot of quality and time in this video and that reflects really the virtue that I see in it. Uh, it's really just an exchange of ideas. If I do some more work on the TNC and put more of myself into it, uh, that would warrant a, a bit more effort in, in the recording. Uh, so yeah, haven't been uh, doing a lot uh, video wise, but uh, yeah, been definitely keeping uh, busy project wise. Catch us later.